Wilson Fisk, aka the Kingpin, the most powerful crime lord on earth. Wilson Fisk wasn't always the feared crime lord that he became later in life. Wilson was an unpopular and chubby kid who was mercilessly picked on by his peers as a kid. Not partaking in the usual athletic activities of kids his age, Fisk discovered a knack for uncovering the weaknesses of others and using them to his advantage. This proved to be a much desired skill he'd carry into adulthood as the criminal mastermind of New York. Wilson Fisk is ruthless, cunning, and wide-bellied, and while he lacks the superpowers of most of his foes, he does have the brains to outsmart them, at least for some time. Fisk has clashed with heroes, anti-heroes, and villains alike, and has been at the center of many, if not most, wrongdoings committed in New York City. He does everything it takes to keep his grip on the New York underworld, which is why he's known as the Kingpin. Kingpin is a famous Marvel villain who first appeared in the pages of Amazing Spider-Man number 50 in 1967. Fisk began gathering power and organized crime at a young age and swiftly rose to become one of New York's most influential figures. Fisk's escapades constantly brought him into confrontations with Spider-Man and Daredevil, despite the fact that he used his intelligence and clout to hide his illicit operations. This eventually led to attempts to enter politics, which attracted Matt Murdock's notice. In the comics, the two have sparred numerous times, with Kingpin ordering assassinations on Matt's pals and exposing his double life to the world. Whenever a hero has managed to apprehend Fisk, he always managed to escape. Today, we will take a look at the most powerful crime lord on Earth and wade through the murky waters of his past. Let us drive right in. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. We're going to rebuild it bigger and better than before. The main thing is, it's mine. The Kingpin First Appearance The Kingpin was created by writer Stan Lee and illustrator John Romita Sr., who modeled his physical appearance on actors Sidney Greenstreet and Robert Middleton. The Kingpin is portrayed primarily as a crime lord in his debut story arc in The Amazing Spider-Man No. 50 through 52, but one who is exceptionally hands-on in his illicit enterprises. In subsequent appearances, again written by Lee, he takes on the role of a traditional supervillain deploying wonderful inventions to advance his nefarious exploits. The character developed more in the early 1980s. Kingpin was characterized as a calculating, cold-blooded crime lord who continuously kept outside the reach of the law in a series of appearances in Daredevil by writer-slash-penciler Frank Miller. Kingpin was widely recognized as Daredevil's arch enemy, hence this was the character's dominating form for decades. Spider-Man, Daredevil, Echo, Hawkeye, and the Punisher have all faced him in the past. Kingpin has had a lot of encounters with Spider-Man. He once allied with Justin Hammer to protect himself from the Web Slinger. He is able to use the services of Electro, who overpowers and captures Spider-Man when he breaks into Fisk's headquarters by trading construction contracts with him. Wilson, unfortunately, has no idea who Parker is when he is unmasked. When Fisk accuses an associate, Mr. Big, of disloyalty, he is bested by Spider-Man. He crushes Big's skull by putting Spider-Man's mask on his head. This is captured on video surveillance, which Peter collects and delivers to Urich. Kingpin is forced to flee to Brazil as tangible proof of his betrayal reaches the news. However, Daredevil, aka Matt Murdock, is Wilson Fisk's most formidable foe. The lawyer turned district attorney Murdock makes significant efforts over the years to take down the number one gangster in New York, clashing both on the streets and in court. Murdoch joins his defender's colleagues, Luke Cage, Jessica Jones, and the Iron Fist to attack Fisk as a team, as a masked vigilante. The Kingpin Dark Origin Like every good villain, Kingpin also has a terribly dark origin story and a childhood filled with hardships that turned him into the ruthless crime lord we know him best as. Wilson Moriarty was the man who would become Kingpin. Wilson was overweight as a child, and as a result, he was shunned by his peers. Wilson's father was a small-time crook who aspired to be a mafia boss. 
Mr. Moriarty, on the other hand, was unable to join the Mafia. Fisk believed that physical strength was a key aspect in gaining influence in the underworld as he grew older. At the age of 12, he committed his first murder and began training to increase his power as much as possible. He was attracted to sumo wrestling and the academic discipline of political science. He stole books from stores and libraries in his quest for knowledge, refusing to become a henchman for local criminal overlords. Instead, he formed his own gang of adolescent buddies, earning the moniker Kingpin of Crime by the age of 15. Wilson attempted to join his father's gang as a young adult in order to gain approval from his father. Wilson's weight, however, slowed him considerably and he was eventually apprehended by the police while his father managed to flee. The judge offered Wilson Moriarty mercy if he named any of his accomplices during his trial. Wilson, on the other hand, refused to confess that he worked for his father and was sentenced to prison. Wilson recognized while in prison that he was completely alone and that he would have to learn to survive or perish. Wilson went to school and learned a lot. He had collected a vast amount of knowledge by the time he was released from prison and proceeded to construct a criminal empire. Wilson Moriarty hacked into police databases and had all of his criminal records erased. He changed his name to Wilson Fisk around this period. He pretended to be a trustworthy businessman and humanitarian. However, he covertly expanded his illegal enterprise. Wilson was dreaded all around New York City, but his exact identity remained a mystery. As a result, the media began to refer to him as the Kingpin. The only person who could incriminate Kingpin was his father, and he knew that. As a result, Kingpin had his father located and brought to him. Kingpin's father had suspected he was his son and professed his admiration for him. Kingpin, on the other hand, sought vengeance for his treachery and had his minions assassinate his father. The act of patricide sealed his reputation as a cold and ruthless killer who would stop at absolutely nothing to get what he wanted. Illegally moving radioactive waste through New York City was one of Kingpin's first illicit endeavors. But his illegal activities did not stop there and it ranged from bribery all the way to murder and massive cases of corruption and cover-ups. This man had a dark, dark past and it turned him into a formidable villain. Kingpin's Major Story Arcs A crime boss who has been around for as long as Kingpin has, he has multiple major story arcs and we will discuss all of them briefly. The first one has to do with Spider-Man. Fisk would realize that Spider-Man was his greatest threat as he was the one who put an end to all of his attempts at uniting all criminals and mafia families. Fisk would finally get his wish after reading the Daily Bugle article claiming Spider-Man had retired from crime fighting after laying low and waiting for the right moment to strike. In Spider-Man's absence, Fisk would push all criminals to unite and dominate the streets of New York City, resulting in one of the city's worst crime waves. After the Kingpin's men captured Daily Bugle owner J. Jonah Jameson, Fisk would finally face the resurrected Spider-Man. Even though Spider-Man was able to stop Fisk's crime spree once more, he was caught off guard by Fisk after mistaking him for a simple overweight criminal. Kingpin would arrange the deaths of both Jameson and Spider-Man by drowning them both in a locked room after easily defeating and knocking out Spider-Man in combat. The next major story arc came as he took a new approach to gain control of New York City after secretly recruiting an Osborne employee known as Dr. Gerhard Winkler who specialized in brainwashing techniques. He cautiously rebuilt his reputation as both a legitimate businessman and a crime lord. Fisk now used the alias of the Brainwasher to fund Wrinkler's services, who was also receiving his equipment from Oscorp Industries and surreptitiously creating a dance club called Gloom Room, a go-go to hide his operations. Fisk's major goal was to utilize the club as a tool to brainwash and influence significant figures in New York City, making it easier for him to rule the city. When Norman Osborn, Winkler's boss, discovered Fisk and Winkler's hidden activities, as well as Spider-Man eventually learning Fisk's whereabouts at Osborn Industries, things went from bad to worse. As Spider-Man defeated Fisk, Osborn accidentally destroyed Winkler's brainwashing machine, freeing George Stacy and everyone else who was under Fisk's influence. Fisk managed to avoid authorities by escaping on one of Osborn's private helicopters after Winkler was killed by the impact of the bursting machine. This leads us to the third major story arc in Fisk's life. When Fisk learned that a petrified clay tablet stored at Empire State University, or ESU, might reveal significant secrets, he was persuaded to obtain the tablet for himself. Fisk and his men rushed into ECU and single-handedly stole the tablet, taking advantage of a nearby protest. Fisk and the hero fought each other until Fisk was knocked out and jailed when Spider-Man arrived on the scene. 
Fisk, who was imprisoned, claimed that his escape was close at hand and labored slowly but steadily to bend the bars of his jail cell with his raw strength, eventually escaping. Fisk would devise a new strategy to entice his adversary and finally eliminate him once and for all seeing Spider-Man's death as a top goal. Fisk successfully enticed the hero to fight him again by staging a hijacking in the streets of New York. As the two fought on the streets, Fisk recognized that he was doomed to lose again at the hands of Spider-Man, so he left with his wife. However, rival gangs Magia and Hydra track him down and try to kill him, forcing him and his family to flee to Japan. Wilson eventually saved up enough money to return to New York. In order to bring the Magia down, he starts a gang war in New York. Kingpin regained control of the criminal underworld in the midst of the chaos. The fourth story arc comes when Fisk was forced into hiding. Fighting to maintain his criminal business, his wife Vanessa would come across an article about her son's death and suspect that Richard committed suicide after learning of his father's criminal past. When a new self-proclaimed criminal lord known as the Schemer took advantage of Fisk's status and crippled what remained of his empire, things went from bad to worse. In revenge, Fisk would conceal his identity and publish an advertisement in the Daily Bugle newspaper offering $5,000 for the schemer's capture. Spider-Man continued after Schemer, and with the help of his plan, Fisk was able to capture both of them. Knowing that his wife had suspicions about the schemer, Fisk compelled the schemer to disclose the truth about himself, and after removing his disguise, he encountered an enraged Richard. He revealed that he hated using his father's unlawful money for most of his childhood and wished to see his father's criminal empire come to an end. Fisk would become catatonic as a result of this, and the onlooking Spider-Man decided that his participation with Fisk and his family's difficulties was unnecessary, so he left them to their fate. His major story arcs include teaming up with Captain America and Falcon to destroy Red Skull, the leader of a terrorist organization known as Hydra that Fisk's son Richard had been working in. This incident would result in immense injuries for Richard, leaving him barely alive, which forced Fisk to put him in cryogenic stasis. He then becomes dedicated to reviving Richard and bringing him back from the jaws of death. Fisk used the pseudonym The Boss and immediately chose his son's arch enemy, Spider-Man, as the ideal candidate to switch life forces with. Sandman, Tinker, and numerous hired men were recruited by Fisk to capture Spider-Man. Spider-Man would finally track Fisk's minions to an abandoned movie studio. Here, an awaited Fisk would successfully capture the unprepared hero using his hired men to have Spider-Man follow them into the lair. Fisk successfully transferred Spider-Man's life power into Richard while strapping him onto a machine alongside his dying son. Following this, Kingpin appears to die in a confrontation with Spider-Man. Fisk survived the underwater wreckage following his confrontation with Spider-Man despite being presumed dead. Before being transferred to the hospital and recovering, he lost his memories and was attacked by competing criminal bosses. When he got home, Vanessa challenged him to choose between a life of crime and her setting him a 24-hour deadline, and he chooses to stop his criminal career by killing Spider-Man. He almost succeeds and is about to deliver the killing blow when Vanessa intervenes, saving the hero's life. After this, Kingpin retires to live as a civilian in Japan, but a villain can only rest for so long. In the process of clearing his name in New York, he gets drawn back into a life of crime as the other mafia bosses threaten and kidnap his wife, and thus Kingpin returns once again. This is when he has his first altercation with Daredevil and Fisk wins the fight, knocking him out. However, he is unable to save his wife and presumes her to be dead. He wanted revenge and appointed Bullseye to exact revenge. Bullseye killed the crime lords but was defeated by Daredevil who swore to put an end to Fisk's crimes. When Fisk returned to his role as the Kingpin of New York city, he was unaware that Vanessa had survived the attack and was hidden underground as a servant of a diabolical massive man who resembled Fisk and was known as King. Vanessa's psyche was fragile and disordered as a result of the terrible occurrences. She was completely oblivious of her existence, believing King to be her spouse. Daredevil was able to vanquish King and save Vanessa from his clutches. By nominating his agent Randolph Cherry as mayor, Fisk attempted to seize control of New York City. Daredevil thwarted Fisk's ambitions by bartering Cherry's removal in exchange for Vanessa, Fisk's wife. Fisk would send his new head assassin Elektra to kill Foggy Nelson in vengeance for Daredevil foiling his scheme. When Foggy recognized her as Matt Murdock's old girlfriend, she declined the contract. Bullseye, on the other hand, wanted to be Fisk's main assassin, but he was no longer useful to Fisk because he couldn't defeat Daredevil. 
As time passed, new dangers to the kingpin surfaced. He begins by enlisting the help of Micah Sin, a deranged cult leader. When Fisk realized that the unscrupulous publisher Milton Farr had vital data that could bring down Fisk's enterprise, he became associated with the Daily Bugle. Fisk also aided Spider-Man in the capture of the enigmatic Hobgoblin. Dr. Octopus was determined to destroy New York City when an activator that Fisk had, resulting in a fight between the two that ended with Fisk winning. Then, because Vanessa was prone to psychotic episodes, as a result of her previous traumatic experiences, Fisk was committed to bringing his wife back to full health. He also persuaded Black Cat to join his team. Nicholson would take on the disguise of the answer and serve as an advisor to Fisk in his various conspiracies against Spider-Man and Black Cat. Answer would advise and assist Fisk in getting Silvermane's lifeless robotic to be used as a potential assassin, as well as suggesting that the vigilante known as Dagger could restore Vanessa to full health. This scheme, however, would fail and he would break up Spider-Man and Black Cat. After this, he would dedicate himself to finding a cure for his wife by hook or by crook. This would lead to more altercations with Daredevil and finally him getting arrested, leading to his biggest fall from grace as he escaped imprisonment and fled into the sewers. He would then lose his entire criminal empire and his son as Vanessa kills Richard. He was finally incarcerated and faced lots of trouble in prison as people tried to kill him. He was also put in the same cell as Matt Murdock in the hopes that they would kill each other. He tries making deals with many people, including Murdoch and the police, but to no avail. He even tries making a deal with Iron Man during the Civil War, his freedom in exchange for the location of the Secret Avengers. He gets free and returns to a life of crime, thus repeating the cycle again and again as he tries to rebuild his empire. Thus, the story of Wilson Fisk is a dark one full of villainy, loss, hardships, and betrayal, and he seems to be stuck in that cycle. Kingpin's Exceptional Powers Fisk's massive size is comparable to that of a sumo wrestler. The majority of his bulk is muscle, not fat. Wilson Fisk is skilled in a variety of hand-to-hand -hand combat techniques and he uses his massive size to defend as well as attack. As a result, he could fight super-powered heroes such as Spider-Man without fear of being seriously injured or killed. Fisk has also adapted other fighting disciplines over the years, including wrestling, street fighting, and others. Fisk practices with at least six hired martial artists on a regular basis. Some of them are armed and instructed to never hold back their attacks against Fisk. Wilson Fisk's ultimate power rests within his skull, despite his enormous size and strength. In order to achieve his nefarious goals, he is able to command vast numbers of dedicated thugs, henchmen such as the Arranger, Big Turk, Blackie, and Blinker, assassins such as Bullseye and Elektra, government officials such as Randolph Cherry, scientists Dr. Jonathan Alm slash The Spot, specialists Alistair Smythe, The Tinkerer, and a general assortment of petty criminal supervillains such as The Hobgoblin, Sandman, Typhoid Mary, and Mysterio, who have all pledged their allegiance to him. Fisk's ability to dupe has led him to deceive powerful and well-connected agencies such as the NYPD, FBI, and SHIELD. He has created for himself a clean reputation by donating significant quantities of money to good causes, hiring a crack team of attorneys, and choosing to be as hands-off as possible in his unlawful enterprises. He also carries a walking stick that can fire a laser pulse powerful enough to demolish a standard revolver as if he wasn't already intimidating enough. It can also spray a concentrated dosage of sleeping gas along with his diamond-studded tie. Fisk has even used a Vita Drain, a contraption that transfers life force from one person to another, as well as a Dr. Gerhard Winkler designed brainwashing machine. Fisk is mentally adept and disciplined and is impervious to hypnosis and anything that causes him to lose his willpower. Even the will-sapping Purple Man couldn't keep Fisk under his power or influence. You took that away from me! You took everything! I'm gonna kill you! Kingpin's appearance in animated TV series, movies, and in live action television series. When it comes to television and the small screen, in the 1967 Spider Man animated series, Kingpin was voiced by Tom Harvey in the episode Kingpin. He also appears in the Spider Woman animated series The Kingpin Strikes Again, as well as the 1981 Spider Man animated series episode Wrath of the Submariner, voiced by Stanley Jones. 
Kingpin was then voiced by Walker Edmiston in the Spider-Man and His Amazing Friends animated series episode, Pawns of the Kingpin. He also appears in Spider-Man the Animated Series with Roscoe Lee Brown as his voice. Kingpin is also voiced by Michael Clark Duncan in the Spider-Man the New Animated Series episode, Royal Scam, replicating his role from the 2003 Daredevil film. Wilson Fisk appears in the Marvel Cinematic Universe in a live-action television series. When it comes to the movies, Wilson Fisk was portrayed by John Rhys Davies in the live-action television movie The Trial of the Incredible Hulk, which aired in 1989. Wilson Fisk slash Kingpin is played by Michael Clark Duncan in the 2003 live-action feature film Daredevil. Finally, Kingpin is voiced by Liev Schreiber in the animated film Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Kingpin's most notable appearance in recent times has been in the Netflix series Daredevil and Disney Plus series Hawkeye. Kingpin leads his crime family in taking over Hell's Kitchen while maintaining a respectable public image in the Netflix series Daredevil. Unlike his usual portrayals, he lacks self-confidence at first, is emotionally unstable, and does not adopt the Kingpin moniker. In season 1, his blossoming connection with an eventual engagement to Vanessa Mariana takes center stage as he and his right-hand man James Wesley deal with criminals, politicians, and corrupt cops. In the Disney Plus series Hawkeye, Kingpin is shown to have re-established his criminal empire after falling in love with Eleanor Bishop, whose late husband Derek owed him money prior to the Battle of New York. When Eleanor wants to end their relationship, Fisk tries to assassinate her, only to be prevented by her daughter Kate. He tries to avoid being apprehended by the cops, but his surrogate niece, Maya Lopez, confronts him after finding that he was involved in her father's death leaving Fisk's destiny uncertain. Hawkeye Episode 5 also establishes Kingpin's participation in one of Marvel's next projects. Maya's growing skepticism of the tracksuit mafia and those she's long considered her closest comrades will almost certainly serve as the basis for Marvel's Echo series, in which D'Onofrio's Kingpin will almost certainly play a role when it debuts on Disney+. Maya Lopez, played by Alakwa Cox, will be the only focus of one of Marvel's numerous forthcoming titles, Echo. Maya is given the name Echo in the comics because of her ability to imitate other people's fighting tactics, and she loses her father at an early age, similar to Hawkeye. Thus, we haven't seen the last of Kingpin by any means. Look forward to more of this peculiar but terrifying villain hitting our screens. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.